Hi, we're going to talk about how to calculate the magnetic field inside an infinitely long solenoid carrying a current. Now, a solenoid is just a helical coil of wire where the windings, instead of being over top of each other, like a traditional loop or coil of wire, they're spread out in space. So, what happens if we have a very, very small solenoid is we end up getting a magnetic field that outside the solenoid looks a lot like the magnetic field that you see in a bar magnet, where it loops around from one end, which on a bar magnet we'd call that the North Pole, back to the South Pole of that bar magnet. But what you get with that bar magnet is a really strong magnetic field right at each end and a very weak magnetic field in the middle. Now if we could go inside what we would see at the very center is a very strong, almost uniform magnetic field. Well, if we want to figure out an approximation for that magnetic field, we could take a look at the case if we could imagine taking that solenoid and extending it infinitely in both directions. So, Ampere's Law tells us that if we can find some path through space where we can calculate the magnetic circulation, the closed integral of the magnetic field dotted with some path integral, that's going to be equal to the permeability of free space mu naught times the current enclosed by that Amperian loop. So for my solenoid, I'm going to assume that it's infinitely long and that the coils, if I slice them, the left half is going to be coming out of the board and the right half is going to be going into the board. So if I were to apply the right hand rule, something in my left hand, thumb going out of the board, my fingers show the magnetic field lines looping around the wire, so inside the coil, my magnetic field would be going straight up. Well, we're assuming that these magnetic field lines are going to loop around, and since this is infinitely long, they would have to travel to infinity in order to loop around. So that means just outside, the magnetic field is almost going to be zero. Now if I take a look between two coils, so for this coil on the top, I'd have a magnetic field that's going to the right. From the coil on the bottom, I'd have a magnetic field that's going to the left. Those two magnetic fields would be the same strength and would cancel themselves out. So if we were to draw an Empyrean loop then, that was just a rectangle that starts at some point, goes out perpendicular to the plane of the coils that I've established, down along the axis of the coil, again perpendicular to that, and then back up in the center of the coil, three of those four parts contribute nothing to the magnetic circulation because the net magnetic field in regions 1, 2, and 3 is going to be zero. So that means my total magnetic circulation would just be my magnetic field inside integrated along some element of path. Well, if this is infinitely long, from symmetry we can argue that magnetic field has to be constant in order for this to work. So that means then that our integral would just be our path. And the distance we travel is just the length of this side of the box that I drew in the vertical direction. So my total circulation would be the strength of the magnetic field times the length of the box. And that would be equal to mu naught times the total current enclosed. Well, there are going to be n loops of wire that I find inside my box. And since it's a coil where all loops are hooked up to each other, that means that each one of those loops would have the exact same current I. So to solve for the magnetic field inside the solenoid, I just have to divide by my length. So the magnetic field we get is the permeability of free space times the number of loops per meter, the total number divided by the total length of our solenoid, times the current of the solenoid. And often, we'll represent the number of turns per length with the lowercase n for little n loops per meter. Thank you for watching.